In today's episode, I'm going to be choosing my top 10 tools to get started in leather crafting. So, you know, stay tuned. So today is a bit of a different episode. Usually I'm here making something, but I get this question all the time. Namely, I want to get started in leather crafting, but I don't know what tools to buy. Most of us, when we're starting with the thing, we have a smaller budget. We don't want to spend a bunch of money on tools. So I've challenged myself today to pick out only 10 tools that like, I think you could get started with and make a whole bunch of projects if you're just getting started. You know, make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to be giving away some tools. And I also want to touch base on like a really fun contest we got going on. A lot happened in this episode, so you know, pour yourself a drink or whatever and let's just hang out. Alright, so just to be clear, there are kind of like two different parameters you can think about. One is if you want to be making like tooling designs into leather, and another one is if you just want to start putting stuff together, like if you just make a wallet but you're not going to put a design on it, you don't necessarily need stamps and whatnot. For the 10 I put together here, it's going to assume you want to do both of those things. But just know if you really want to, you can switch some of these tools out. Now this is in no particular order, I just have the tools laid out in front of me, so here we go. I'm gonna start with kind of the most basic one, and that is just a mallet. This one's got like a plastic head to it, a lot of times you'll see ones with rawhide heads to them. And this is gonna do a whole bunch of work for you. Everything from punching holes, to setting rivets or snaps, to again, if you're gonna be tooling, like this is the main thing you tool with. You want to have one of these non-metal heads because you don't want to be damaging your tools as you're going. Not only that, but you don't really need something that heavy. You don't want to go to town with like a big old hammer or a sledge here, right? You're going to be making a lot of the same repetitive moves over and over again if you're tooling. And a little guy like this does more than enough of a good job. This thing's been great for me so far. Cool, moving on from our mallet, I'm actually going to go to what makes the most sense to me next, and that is hole punches. Now these come in either like the standalone little punches like this where you can change out the heads or in a rotary punch. But if you had to make a decision, I'd actually recommend using the individual punches. Mostly because as awesome, and a rotary punch is fantastic. As awesome as this is though, you can't reach everywhere on a piece of leather. So if for example, I needed to punch a hole right in the middle of this piece here, I can't, I can't get there with my rotary one. Doesn't, doesn't quite get that far. But with my punch, I put it wherever I want. Nice and easy. They come in a whole bunch of sizes, and honestly, these are one of the tools I use almost every project. They're like, meh, you definitely need some hole punches. All right, so we're covering these pretty quick. That's number two. Number three, though, while we're talking about punching holes, are actually these kind of like forked punches here. These also come in a bunch of different sizes with like different numbers of tines in them, and also like the spacing between each tine is different. And these are basically used to punch the holes for like stitching, right? You know, you go through, you punch all your holes first, and then you use your needle and thread to actually stitch something together. Well, like I said, these come in a bunch of different sizes, and you can buy a whole bunch of different forks. But I've actually had a lot of luck with this one here where you can just kind of change out the head as you need to. It just takes up a lot less space and it's super easy to use. That said, if you don't want to spend the money on the forks, you could just do the whole thing with a good awl. Something nice and sharp so you're not going to have to like really muscle your way through the leather. But this does come with a caveat because the nice thing with the fork is everything's going to be evenly spaced. With an awl, you're probably going to have to measure those spacings first before you go ahead and punch your holes. Not a big deal if you're not doing a whole bunch of holes. You know what I mean. But even something as simple as a like a small wallet, like that is a lot of holes that you're going to have to do with a punch. Just kind of a pain. So yeah, my number three choice would definitely be those like timed punches. Now, the natural progression from this uh, it, for our number four choice is actually going to be the surface that you're working on. And you're going to need two kinds of surfaces depending on what you're doing. The first one for when you're punching holes and stuff is gonna need to be something that like isn't gonna damage your tools and is soft enough for it to stab into, but strong enough so that it doesn't give underneath the blows. So a lot of those tooling kits will come with like a little rubber mat, but I really love using just an old cutting board. These PVC cutting boards are really cheap. They last a long time. They don't damage your tools and they're stiff enough, which to me is the, the biggest seller. They're stiff enough so that as I'm hitting things, the leather doesn't have a place to go, right? It doesn't have any of that like, I guess in wood you'd call it chip out, where the leather kind of flares itself out at the bottom. Because this is so hard, it doesn't do that. It just leaves really nice clean holes. The other surface you're gonna need is actually like a good hard surface, something with a lot of mass to it. 
This is gonna work great for if you are tooling things or you're setting rivets. Now like half of my table over here is made out of marble that I got when we redid our kitchen. But I've used everything from like this board here that I just kind of glued a, a piece of floor tile to, to this chunky square of steel I have here. I usually use this to set rivets and stuff. Most of this I just found kind of as scrap. And as a good kind of tip for you, because sometimes just buying a little piece of granite or, or marble or something off the internet is expensive, just go to a countertop place, a place that actually makes countertops and ask them if you can have a piece of their scrap. They cut out squares for like sinks to set into and stuff, and that is not usable stuff for them. They'll usually just throw that away. I've had really good luck just going there and be like, hey, do you have like a broken piece that I can grab? And that's more than enough. Now for the longest time, I didn't think this would make as big of a difference as it does. Like I used to tool on this table just on wood. But the difference is night and day. That extra little springiness with the wood actually takes out a lot of the detail. But when you hammer on a surface that is hard and has a lot of mass so that that energy can't be absorbed, all of those markings become super clean and you don't even have to hit as hard so you don't have to work as hard. What I'm saying is you want that surface. It is definitely a crucial piece of kit. All right, so that was one, two, three. We're at number four there. So let's get on to number five. Uh, let's see. All right, you see what I was doing right there? I have a really bad habit of just kind of like sticking tools in my mouth or I'll hold them there while I do other things. I got a bit of an oral fixation, I think. You, you jackals are definitely gonna mean that. Luckily, thanks to today's sponsor, Fume, I can have a little bit of help with this. Fume is not only a great way to break some bad habits, but the thing is really well made too. Basically, it is a flavored air device. It's super cool. You just kind of open it up like so, and there's these little kind of flavor cylinders that you stick inside of it, and then you just kind of put it back together, and there's a, an airflow adjustment right here in the front, so you can control just how much air you're getting as you go. Then you simply, inhale it and taste the flavors. And they have a whole bunch of flavors, like whether it's sparkling, grapefruit, crisp mint, white cranberry. I'm using the orange vanilla right now. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you what, it's really good. Like, yes, it was sent as a sponsorship. Actually, it was sent for me to try because I like to try things before I, I show it to you. It was sent for me to try a while ago. And now I just find myself like as I'm working or whatever, just kind of like idly, idly breathing it in. The flavors last a long time. It tastes good. It gives me something to do with my mouth. And as I said, I'm really impressed. Like it's heavy and very well made. It's made out of like metal and wood. Anyways, if you have a habit you want to break or you just kind of want to give it a try because it's awesome, Fume has a deal for our community. Just head to tryfume.com backslash skill tree or scan the QR code and use the code skill tree to get 10% off of their journey pack. With the journey kit, you get everything you need to try it out. You know, the device, some flavors, a cleaning device for it. And I believe with this code, there are different models of this you can select and it still has that same 10% off. So yeah, definitely check this out. I do really like it. Link in the description below. All right, now where were we? Number five, I think. So for my number five, I'm actually gonna go with kind of one I mention a lot and that is just a sharp knife of some sort. Now sure, you can go kind of crazy and get yourself something like this, but honestly, the upkeep is gonna be a lot. If you don't know how to sharpen this, you're gonna get a couple uses out of it. You'll probably cut yourself because they're not easy to learn. And then you're not gonna be able to use it again because it's dull. For my money and when you're just getting started, you can't beat a, like a nice razor knife. Just make sure you replace the blades often because a dull knife is a dangerous knife. And this is gonna do like most of the work you need to do. And also while you're using the knife, don't push too hard into leather. If you're using like thicker leather, it's better to take multiple cuts and let the knife do the work than it is to kind of like muscle your way through it. And as I said, there's a bunch of different designs for like leather knives. These ones were made for me by subscriber and friend of the show, Eric, but I wouldn't get lost in the sauce if I were you. I would definitely just stick with when you're first getting started, just a regular old utility knife. It'll do everything you need it to do. All right, for my number six choice, you have cut out that piece of leather with your sharp knife. Now you need to treat those edges. So an edge beveler is definitely something you're gonna need. This is basically a little fork with a blade inside of it. And what you do is you ride it along the edge of your leather and it rounds it off. This goes a huge way of making like your leather pieces seem more finished. Before you round it off, you have the square edge and there's often little fibers kind of hanging off of the thing. Doing this and just kind of rounding off that edge, it, it just really like instantly makes something look way more finished. 
Now these come in a bunch of different sizes too. Um, I've been using this one. I don't even, I don't even know what size. Oh, this is a number three, apparently. I've been using this one though for everything. And as I get more advanced, I definitely notice the disadvantage of that. Less so with the larger pieces. I think this number three does pretty good with the larger pieces. It's with the smaller pieces that I'm having issues. If I have like a four to two kind of ounce piece of leather, this thing is just kind of too big and it, it, it takes too big of a chunk away. Now I did see kind of like with the, the little punches here, there is one where you can have all these different tops and you just unscrew it and re-screw in the one you need. That'll save you a bunch of room in your bag if you don't want to have a bunch of these kind of lined up. But yeah, getting at least, uh, like I said, I've had this number three for years. Getting this one seems to be a good all around. For really thin leathers, it's, it's a little too big, but I've been able to make it work so far. So take it for what it's worth. That being said, though, this gets us part of the way there by rounding off that edge to really make something look, mwah, to make it look finished, you're going to want to get our next tool, which is going to be this edge slicker here. I think it's also called like a burnishing tool, to call it whatever you want. It makes everything look just perfect. Basically, you take it, you wet the edge of leather that you have already beveled, and then you use this thing to make friction and just kind of smooth it out. And it really does smooth it out. It makes that, that edge just kind of look like glass. Now, when you're using it, the trick isn't that you're like pushing those fibers down or anything. It's not a pressure thing. It's actually a, a friction thing. You're letting heat gather up. That friction burnishes those edges and makes them nice and clean and shiny. This one brings us part of the way there, but this one, this one finishes it up. And they come in a bunch of different kind of configurations. This one's like a disc. This one is this little kind of honeycomb thing. There are some you can put on the end of a Dremel, which is just mint. But if you can only get one in your budget, I'd go for this little honeycomb one. It has a bunch of different sizes to it. If you want, like I've done, you can flatten out the, the end here and you can still stick it into a drill. I have like four or five of these like disc ones that go into drills a little easier or whatever. And I still always end up using this one. I just prefer it. It's It's been my old standard. Though the one caveat I will give with this, if you want to be really cheap, you actually could just burnish the edges with like a rag. Again, it's just friction that's making it happen, right? So you take a rag and you, you kind of really fast go back and forth and it will burnish it. It's just much harder to control than having something like this. It's gonna take you a little bit more work. That technique is great for using for like straps or whatever, cause you can just kind of grab the strap with a rag and you pull it through real fast. But yeah, I'd still recommend you pick up one of these. These are gonna do you way better. All right, so we've got ways to punch holes, to cut out leather, to make the edges look nice. Now let's say we wanna add some designs to it, right? You're gonna need, absolutely you're going to need a swivel knife. Basically, once you put your design onto the leather, you use this to cut that design into place. Because it's very aptly named, it is a knife on a swivel. It makes it very easy to control and, and smoothly follow arches and lines. That said, these also come in varying sizes. You're definitely gonna wanna get yourself one like larger blade like this one, and then a smaller blade for finer details. This bad boy, when you're trying to put like designs onto leather is irreplaceable. Some of the other stuff, like the stamping we're gonna do or whatever, like you, you can get away with using some other stuff or making your own tools or whatever. But, but this here, man, this is like clutch. If you want something to come out really clean, definitely spend your money and get a swivel knife. That said, with it, make sure you get yourself some jeweler's rouge. I'm not including some of the kind of more disposable things or the things that kind of run out. These I'm just keeping up to, to tools that are gonna last you a long time. But in order for this to last you a long time, you're also gonna need some jeweler's rouge to go with it so you can keep it nice and sharp. We'll go over how to do that on another episode. That's not what this episode is about, but still just consider that a set. You're gonna need jeweler's rouge if you're also buying a swivel knife. Okay, so you've cut in your design. To make it actually stick out, you're gonna want some stamps. There are a, a never ending amount of stamps you can buy. And 99.9% .9 of them are a nice to have, not a need to have. I got ones that look like leaves, little wavy patterns, ones that look like a basket weave. They save you a boatload of time and for sure as you kind of progress with your leather crafting, you're gonna pick up just a whole bunch of them that fit whatever needs you have. 
But for my purposes and for yours, just getting started, there's only really two that I, I think are pretty essential. And of those, only one is absolutely essential. And that is your beveling stamp. Basically, you use your swivel knife to cut in a design, and then you follow that cut you just made with your beveling stamp, which will bring down kind of one side of that cut, which makes the other side look raised. That's kind of how you separate your image from the rest of the leather. It makes everything look really cool. So yeah, if you can only get one stamp, I would recommend getting that stamp. The other one I recommend though, is actually just this simple background tool. All it is is kind of a textured background, and using this, you can make some really cool effects. You can add some shading. You can add interest to the rest of the piece. Kind of make the piece that you cut further stick out by making like it a, a different texture altogether. Seriously, for the first like, man, I want to say 10 things that I made on this channel where there's like an image. It's just a bevel tool and a background tool to make it stick out. In fact, the very first thing I made on this channel were some, some bracers and it was just the beveling tool and a backgrounder. You don't need to spend a lot to get into this craft for sure. All right, that's number nine. The very last tool I would recommend is actually just a wing divider. I slept on this tool for a while. I use rulers for just everything under the sun. Every time I needed a straight edge or every time I needed to measure where things are gonna go, I would always just turn to my ruler. And you totally can. You don't absolutely need this tool, but it makes life just so much easier. Basically, you can use it to like mark out where you want around the edge something to go, making sure it stays nice and even. Or let's say you need to cut holes for a belt. You mark how far apart you want those things to be, and then you just walk this along the leather, making your marks where you want them. Using this, you can transfer things from a pattern or something you've drawn onto the leather by just kind of opening the tines to where those lines need to go. Seriously, I've used this thing for so many different things. One of my favorite things to use it for actually is I, I transcribe a circle with it. I then cut out that perfect circle, which I can then use with a strap cutter to make my own lacing. It's just proven to be really, really versatile and has moved its way up into my top 10 for sure. So yeah, that is my top 10 choices. If you're just getting started with leather crafting, these are the things that will do like 99% of the job, at least for me. Though I do have a couple of honorable mentions. The first being an, an edge groover. So basically what this does is you run it along the edge and it's gonna make a groove kind of whatever distance you set it away from that edge. This is just basically for when you're stitching, you want those stitches to kind of settle down below the surface of the leather so they don't have a lot of wear. So for example, if you made yourself a wallet or something, if you didn't kind of groove it in and put those laces more inset, as you take it in and out of your pocket, those threads are gonna start to wear away over time. Not only that, but it just kind of makes the project look cleaner. There isn't like, you know, the threads on the surface of it, they're sunk in a little bit. The other honorable mention, and I contemplated not doing this because I consider them a bit disposable, but that's just a, a really good set of needles. If you're going to be leather crafting, you're gonna be sewing especially, you can't use regular needles. There's special needles for it. They're kind of blunted on the surface. And yeah, having good ones are just super necessary. You don't, you don't wanna try sewing leather with regular needles with a sharp point. Man, is that an exercise in futility. I've done it before in a pinch. It is not fun. Luckily, a lot of this stuff comes together in fairly cheap kits. You can get like a really cheap kit from Amazon, I think for like, I don't know, $30 or something. I have it in my Amazon store. In fact, I have a link down below that goes to my Amazon store where I've put together a basic leather crafting area that has all of these and some of my other top picks. That being said, I want to make you a really nice kit. So if you leave, let me see, leave hashtag craft down in the comment section below. And I'm going to choose one of you to make a little, make a holiday gift for. I'm going to buy some real nice tools. I'll put them all together and I'm going to send them your way. Just a little something to, to get you started on your leather crafting journey. So there is one caveat. Once you win this prize, I want you to share with us what the first thing you make with it is. Now I did want to cover over one more thing for we are in the midst of a challenge. Our friends over at Bergsteiner actually just released a really cool line of like D&D &D costumes. They're officially sanctioned by D&D &D and everything. And let me tell you what, they are so badass. We got to kind of play with them at Comic-Con and show them off. And they were a huge hit, first of all. 
Anyways, the challenge is called D&D Call to Arms Class Challenge. Basically, they've released the first four of the costumes that are going to be coming out. The rogue, the cleric, the fighter, and the wizard. Now, these were designed to be accessible to people, so they're not crazy expensive already. But our community gets an extra 15% off by using the link below and then using the code SKILLTREE15 at checkout. But that's not all, because like I said, there's a contest. There's kind of a game for us to play. Actually, there's like a few simultaneous games to play. So the first one is if you buy one of these and you make it your own somehow, like add on your own armor or make it your own original character somehow, and then send it in to us and we're going to pick some winners and you guys will end up getting like vouchers to the Berg Snyder site to buy more stuff. So that's one way to win, but if you don't want to like have to like make it all up yourself or whatever or change it into your own original character, there's a couple of other ways to play too. The first one is just to wear the costume out anywhere. Go to like a party, go to a con, whatever. Take a picture of yourself wearing it and put it on social media with the hashtag call to arms. Another way to win is if you're dressed up while you're actually playing D&D with friends. Again, just take a picture with hashtag call to arms and we'll pull from that for an additional $100 voucher. Really, it's just a way for our community to have fun with these costumes and win some prizes while we do it. Like I said, I've been wearing these. I'd buy them anyways, even if they weren't part of our challenge. I, I kind of love them. I've gotten to play with all of them, and so far, I, I love them all. I'm not going to lie. The fighter's kind of my favorite right now, mostly because it has a really great base to build off of. I feel like I could wear this costume to like any LARP and it's gonna look good. But the rogue as well, man, I don't know. That rogue is pretty great. I love how the cloak has like places to put your arms and stuff. That's awesome. Anyways, I hope you jump in and have fun with us. I know I'm gonna be playing with it, so I hope you join me at least. More details and rules and stuff in the description below. All right, that's all I got. I hope you found this useful. If you did, why don't you consider giving me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime though, keep leveling up you. You made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It's a fantastic way to support this channel. Another fantastic way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon members and honestly, we can't do any of this without you. Special thanks to our newest high tier Patreon members. Kriegs and Dane Wetley. Again, it just means everything to us that you like what we do here enough to support us. And it really does go a long way to making this channel better. If you like what we do here and like to support us, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos here that YouTube thinks you'd like, and that really helps out too. I'm just gonna lovingly stroke my armor while you decide. Mm, this isn't weird. This isn't weird at all, everyone does it.